need water, oxygen, and a suitable temperature to germinate. When there isn't any water, germination will not take place. Yeah! <laughs> However, too much water might also prevent germination from taking place. <laughs> Oops! Oxygen is required for germination. If there isn't any oxygen, all living things in this world will die. And that goes for seeds too. <laughs> yeah! And don't forget that the most suitable temperature for germination is between 30 and 35 degrees centigrade. Remember, all three conditions must be met before germination can take place. Water, oxygen, and the most suitable temperature to germinate. Have you heard about vegetative reproduction? Well, let me explain. Vegetative reproduction is the separation of a part of the parent plant which can develop into a completely new plant. The advantage of vegetative reproduction is that only a single parent plant or a part of it is needed. Different plants have different plant parts that can reproduce vegetatively. Rhizomes, palms, bulbs, stem tubers, leaves, runners, stem cuttings and suckers are some of these parts. These are horizontal underground stems which possess scale leaves and buds. They contain stored food and they are rather fleshy. Buds that arise from each rhizome allows the formation of new young plants. Well, ginger is an example of a rhizome. Do you know what combs are? A comb is a thick, short, underground stem swollen with food reserves. Buds may be found on dry scale leaves that protect the stem. Under favorable conditions, the buds use the food reserves to grow into aerial shoots that bear leaves. The water chestnut and the yam are examples of palms. Do you know that onions and garlic are reproduced by bulbs? Well, let me explain. Bulbs are very short roots with a stem that is only a few millimeters long. Scale leaves are leaves that surround the stem. In bulbs, food is stored in leaves instead of in the underground stem. Its buds grow in the axils of the scale leaves. So, that's how onions and garlic grow. Next, we take a look at stem tubers. These are swollen underground stems with a number of reduced scale leaves. The buds in the tubers are referred to as the eyes. Can you see this? Well, that's a bud. The tuber stores the food in the form of protein and starch. The buds produce young shoots and as these shoots grow into young plants, they photosynthesize 
and form new tubers. <coughs> Potatoes and dahlias are two examples of plants with tubers. Plants that reproduce by the leaf usually have thick and juicy leaves. Well, as you can see right here, new plants grow out from the edges of a mature begonia leaf. So, the begonia is a very good example of a plant that uses leaves to reproduce. Have you heard about runners? This is another type of reproduction. Plants such as the strawberry and sweet potato are two examples. Runners are also known as stolons and these are stems that grow horizontally on the ground. The shoots and roots of the young plant develops from the runners. Do you know that some flowers such as the bougainvillea and rose are reproduced by using stem cuttings? Well, it's true! New plants can grow from the buds found on the stem. The part of the stem containing the bud is cut and then buried in the soil. The tapioca and sugarcane are also examples of reproduction by stem cuttings. The next form of vegetative reproduction involves suckers. Suckers are shoots that grow from the base of the stem. They can be separated from the parent plant. If you plant them, they will grow into a new plant. This type of vegetative reproduction occurs in banana and pineapple plants. <laughs> Do you know that plants can also be grown from tissues obtained from the parent plant? Scientists can grow plants using plant tissue that is placed in a suitable medium in a petri dish. The medium has all the nutrients, vitamins, and certain substances to support plant growth. Some substances that cause the tissue to develop into different plant parts are also present in the medium. This allows the tissue to grow into a complete plant.
yes. One important consideration. The medium must be free of microorganisms. Hmm. Vegetative reproduction has both its advantages and disadvantages. Do you know what they are? You don't? Well, let me explain the advantages first. It takes a shorter time for new plants to develop by vegetative reproduction than from seeds. No fertilization takes place as only one parent is needed. In addition, the new plants can survive better in harsh conditions because they can still obtain food from the parent plants. Since vegetative reproduction is a form of asexual reproduction, the young plant will resemble the parent plant in every way. Then, the good qualities of the parent plant can be directly passed down to the young plant without any changes. Vegetative reproduction also does not require the aid of any external agents like wind or insects for pollination and dispersal. However, as in everything in life, there are certain disadvantages of vegetative reproduction. Compared to the new plants produced by seeds, those produced by vegetative reproduction are of lesser variety and hence this makes them less adaptable to changes in the environment. The lack of dispersal makes the new plants grow close together and have to compete for sunlight and nutrients. Yahoo! Looks like we have finished learning almost everything there is about vegetative reproduction. We have learned that the seed is made up of the embryo, the cotyledons, the testa, and the micropyle. Then, we learned that there are two types of physical changes in seedlings during germination. They are epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. We have also learned that there are three things needed for germination to take place. They are water, oxygen and a suitable temperature. We also look at the plant parts of different plants that can reproduce themselves. These parts are rhizomes, combs, bulbs, stem tubers, leaves, runners, stem cuttings and suckers. <laughs> look! Look what I've got here! Seeds! <laughs> Let's place them in the ground once again. Oops! I think that's all the time we have for today. But I will be seeing you in the next episode where we will discover even more wonderful secrets of science.